So if you are here because you had trouble setting up your environment, that's okay. If you've never seen the terminal before, then this process can be a bit tricky at first, but don't worry. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would set up my environment on my MacBook Pro. So let's see what version I have. So I have El Capitan. If you have a newer or an older version or a different version, um, these instructions should still work out for you. Um, however, if you if they don't, if you make it through the end of this tutorial and you still can't get your projects up and and running, uh, you can email us. Just go to www.podpie.com, uh, navigate to the support page, and send us a message, and we will help help get you up and running. One other thing I wanted to say before we begin is that if you are using a parent's machine or a family member's machine you're going to need the password to that computer. So if you don't have that information, you need to go get it now, or they need to be um, nearby, so that way they can type in the password when the time comes. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've uninstalled all of the software that I would need to get the projects running. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the installation instructions for the Mac step by step so that way we can see what some of the potential pitfalls might be. I can help you avoid those or if you've already fallen in I can help pull you out um, hopefully. So I'm looking at the magazine the installation instructions that says step one download Arduino. So I'm going to go to the Arduino homepage I'm going to click on download. I'm going to pick my operating system and I have the Mac OS X so I'm going to click it and I'm going to click just download and while that downloads I'm going to move on to step two. It says plug in your Arduino using the USB cable. Okay you can't see me but that's that's what I'm doing um, so you're just going to have to trust me. Step three says install Arduino like any other software package. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to open this. Step four says find the Arduino.app application in your computer using the Finder search bar. Okay, so we're in Finder right now. Uh, under downloads, I see Arduino. I see Arduino 2, so it looks like I did, forgot to uninstall this, but that's okay. I'm just going to click Arduino 2. It's asking if I really want to open it, and I do. Okay, so we're on step 6. I'm going to open a sketch by clicking File. Oops by clicking File, Examples, Fermata, Standard Fermata. And now I'm going to select a board by going to Tools, Board, uh, and then I'm going to select the Arduino Guino Uno, and it looks like that was already selected, so that's good. And now I'm going to move on to step eight. I'm going to go to Tools, Port, uh, and I want to select the USB port. So I'm going to click on that. It was already selected again, so that's good. And now we're on step nine. It says click the upload icon. Um, so that's right here. I'm going to click that. And hopefully uh, that'll just compile and you won't get any errors. And if that's the case, now we're on step 10. And this might be uh, where things got a bit confusing for you. If you have never seen a command line interface before, and that's what the terminal is, um, then it might look a, li a little bit intimidating since it's all uh, text-based. Um, but for now, all you need to know is that a command line interface or the terminal is just a program on your computer that lets you uh, 
delete files, create files, and it, it also lets you navigate folders and files. Um, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to use the terminal to download node um, if we need to and then later we're going to use it to run our scripts um, using node in the terminal. So I'm going to open up Finder and in this search bar I'm going to type in terminal and here I see it here so I'm going to click on it and you should you should see something similar. It might not look exactly the same. The colors might be different. Uh, and your terminal probably isn't going to say, hello, Earthling. But it should look similar to this. So now we are on step 11. And it says, step 11 says to type in nano LED dot JS. So let's see what happens when we do that. Um, OK, so that opens up a text editor. Um, the text editor's name is called Nano. And so step 12 says write out the code for the lesson in the Nano editor. Um, okay, so to, f to what I need to do is I need to find the code that he's talking about. So let's find the first lesson. The first lesson is called first LED. Okay, so I found the project uh, and now what we need to do is we just need to go through line by line and, and copy the code from the magazine into Nano. So I've cheated, I've, I've copied and pasted it in, but you need to go through and do it line by line uh, and you need to be very careful to make sure you have exactly the same code that you see in the magazine or else it won't work properly. So once I've done that, I need to, to save and exit. So I'm going to hit Control X. Um, and then I'm going to type in Y for yes. And then it's asking if I want to write to a file called led.js. And I do, so I'm just going to hit return. So now we are on step 14. It says in the terminal type node and the file name to execute the script. Okay, so let's see what happens when I try to do that. Oh, it's saying that the command is not found, and that's because I went through and I uninstalled Node. So that way you could, that way we could go through it together and see how to do it. So maybe you didn't get this same error as me, though. Uh, maybe you already have Node installed. And one way to check is to type in node-v. And if you have Node installed, it'll, it'll show you a version number. But if you don't, you're going to get this bash node command not found error. Um, and then you're going to have to install it. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to uh, PodPy. And if you look at the bottom of the installation instructions in the magazine, you see a URL that you can go to. So podpy.com slash setup. Oops, I spelt it wrong. And I'm going to click on Mac. And you'll find uh, some information on Node. I'm going to go to the Node homepage. And I, we have a, a Mac, so I'm going to click on this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it. Uh, and I'm just gonna go through this drill. Install. And this is where you're gonna maybe need um, an adult to type in the password. Okay, and it looks like it installed uh, successfully. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to type in node dash version and see what I get. Oh, now I get the version number here. Um, so, so that's good. So now let's try doing node led.js and see what happens. Oh, we're still getting an error. 
So why are we getting an error? We see that it says something about Johnny Five. So let, let's let's open our file again with nano. So I'm going to type nano led.js and we see this first line uh, require Johnny Five. Well, in order for this program to work, we need the Johnny Five library. Um, and we haven't installed that yet, so that's why our, our, our machine is complaining. So I'm going to exit this again with Control X. And I'm going to go back to PodPy, uh, PodPy.com, Mac Setup. I'm going to... Scroll down to here, uh, 2.3, install Johnny 5. Um, so it looks like we are given a command that we can actually type in to our terminal. So terminals are pretty cool. We can type in this exact command into our terminal. So sudo npm install Johnny 5. And again, you're gonna you're gonna need a password for this. And it should be installing. Okay. So let's now that we've installed node and we've um, we've installed Johnny Five. We should have everything we need to run the program. So now I'm going to type node led.js again and see what happens. Oh, it, it worked. And so now you can't you can't see it, but uh, I have I had my hardware all set up from the first lesson, and maybe you haven't done that yet. Uh, you should do that now um, if you haven't already. But so I did that, and my LED is actually blinking, and that's great. Uh, and so if at this point, if your LED, if your first project is working, uh, and you you don't want any more information, you're all done. You want to go take a break, or you want to you want to do something else. Then you could just go ahead and pause this video. However, if you are feeling adventurous, then you can stick around with me for a little bit longer. And I'm going to show you a few other useful commands that you can type into your terminal. Um, and I think that'll help you out a bit in the future. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit this. To do that, I, I typed Control C. And now I'm going to type Control C again. Uh, and now I want to see where exactly did I save my led.js file. So to do that, I can type ls. And I see the file, led.js, right here. Uh, and so as we go through this magazine and we do the different projects, our home folder is going to fill up with quite a few JS files. And that might get kind of messy. So for organizational purposes, I would like to have all my JS files in the same folder. So we could do that in the terminal. And that's one of the nice things about, about the terminal is it allows you to, to do things like this very easily. So what I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a directory called scripts. So to do that, I'm gonna type mkdir, it stands for make directory. I'm gonna call it scripts. Okay, so now I can type in ls again. And we see that we have our LED file, we have our scripts file. We also have some node modules from when we installed node, uh, but that's not very relevant right now. So what I want to do is I want to I want to move my led.js file into the scripts folder. And a, a directory, by the way, is just it's the folder. Um, it's basically just like a folder, and you can store files in the folder, or you can even store other folders in in the directory. 
Um, but okay, so now to move our led.js file into the scripts folder, um, what we need to do is we need to use the mv command that stands for move. So I type mv led.js uh, and then we want to move it into the scripts directory uh, but we still need to give the file a name so I'm going to call I'm gonna leave it the same so I'm gonna type in led.js so I'm moving the led.js file into uh, into scripts slash led.js so now let's type ls again and we see it looks like our LED uh, file disappeared, but we still got our scripts directory. So now just to illustrate, let's see what happens now when I try to run the LED.js file. So I'm going to type node LED.js and we got all kinds of errors. Well, that's because um, the, we're not in the right directory anymore. We moved our led.js file into the scripts directory. So if we want to run that program, we need to actually be in the scripts directory. So to do that, we can use the cd command, and that stands for change directories. So I'm going to type cd scripts, and I'm going to hit enter. And now let's, let's ls just to see what's in the scripts directory. And sure enough, there's only one file in there right now, uh, just the led.js file. So now I should be able to type node led.js. And sure enough, it works, and my led is blinking. OK, so one last thing I wanted to say. Um, so. Right now we're using Nano, uh, as that's the text editor that we used. And that's nice because we could use it within the command line. However, if you're like me and you really like colors, then there are, I think, better text editors to use. So let me go ahead and exit this program. So I'm going to do it the same old way, just control C, control C. Um, and now I'm not going to go through all of the instructions in depth for this, but you can go to Atom. That's a, a different text editor, one that I like. Um, and you can, if you have a Mac, you basically just download it for Mac. And once you've done that, now instead of typing nano led.js um, to bring up this text editor, let me exit out of there. Instead of doing that, I could just do Atom led.js. So I could, I could do this once I've installed Atom, or once I've downloaded Atom. And when I, when I press Enter, what will come up is is this. So it's the same it's the same code that we saw in Nano, but now it looks really pretty and we have all of these nice nice colors, which I think is easier on the eyes and it makes coding much more enjoyable. Okay, that's that's all I have. Uh, hopefully you're able to get your project up and working. If not, uh, please message us and we will help you. Uh, thanks for listening.